All right, the first advancement takes us to the University of Colorado Boulder, where researchers are pushing the boundaries of soft robotics. Soft robotics is a subfield of robotics that is built on how living organisms move and interact with their environment and deal with compliant materials versus rigid materials. The researchers at Boulder developed the hydraulically amplified self-healing electrostatic actuator, or hazel actuator for short. The actuators are made out of elastic pouches connected to electrodes and filled with vegetable oil. The oil is an electrically insulating liquid, and when electricity is applied, the oil is displaced, making the artificial muscle contract. And this can happen in milliseconds. And changing the shape and configuration of pouches will produce different movements. Assistant Professor and Fellow of Material Science and Engineering Program Christoph Keplinger says, Hazel actuators synergize the strength of soft fluidic and soft electrostatic actuators and thus combine versatility and performance like no other artificial muscle before. Just like biological muscles, hazel actuators can produce the adaptability of an octopus arm, the speed of a hummingbird, and the strength of an elephant." End quote. And what might be the most incredible part of this advancement is that the devices are made out of low-cost material and can be made for just 10 cents. The researchers are continuing to improve the technology. The actuators currently take a lot of power, but they are working on devices that will operate on one-fifth of the power. And they have secured patents for the technology and currently exploring commercial opportunities. Who wants to see Boston Dynamics or Hanson Robotics license this tech? I sure do. All right. Listen up, retards. It's Johnny Wang. Just find out how your body works. Your body's a big uh, bag of flesh with electricity running through it, all kinds of sensors, okay? Now if you want to increase your muscle performance and strength, stamina, all the functions <laughs> that you're looking for, what you want to do is better manage your power consumption and your power usage. Learn to program your muscles more efficiently. This is why bodybuilders are usually not very strong for their size and usually don't make very good fighters. What you want is a uh, nice small muscle because it uses up less energy. Program and manage that energy more efficiently you will increase your performance. Now when your power supply exceeds your muscle carrying capacity your muscle will grow in size and you don't have to lift weights to do that it will naturally do that. So to explain dielectric elastomers in a nutshell let's start by looking at a block of rubber with no modifications. Rubber, similar to liquid water, is incompressible, meaning that volume remains constant when it is deformed. So if you apply a pressure to the top and bottom of this rubber block, it will deform in the x and y directions. Think about squeezing a balloon. When you squeeze it, it bows out in the directions it's not being squeezed in, right? So when you shorten the height of this block, the depth and the width will expand in order to keep the volume constant. So how do we apply a constant even pressure over the top of this rubber block? Well, one way would be to attach a conductive material to the top and bottom of the block. We need to keep in mind though that this material needs to be flexible so that when the block expands, the conductor expands as well. An excellent conductor for this is carbon grease. When these conductors are charged, theoretically, the rubber block will become a parallel plate capacitor. And if charge is allowed to build up, it will cause the two conductive plates to pull towards each other. This will cause the rubber to compress in one direction and expand in the other two. This means that the stretch of the rubber is now controllable by the voltage applied to the top and bottom of the DEA. Additionally, as we stated earlier, this essentially acts as a parallel plate capacitor. The capacitance, though, is a function of both area A and thickness D. This means that the capacitance changes as the DEA is deformed. This capacitance can be measured, and when the DEA is deformed, then you know that the elastomer is in its deformed state. Here we see the area in the unstretched rubber block, as well as its thickness. 
On the right side, we have the area in the stretched rubber block, as well as its thickness. From this graphic, you can see that the capacitance will change by a significant amount depending on the stretch. So, not only can DEAs be used as actuators, but they can be used as strain sensors as well. Now that we've gone over some of the basics of DEAs, we're going to show you some examples of what you can make and what materials you will need to do so. Here are some of the things that you may need in order to make your own DEAs. First, you need a cutting board to cut these plastic in precise shapes. This can also be done in a laser cutter for more precision. You may also need a thin plastic sheet. Now this can be recycled from a strawberry package or any other plastic package you may find. As stated before, you will also need carbon grease, gloves to avoid spreading carbon grease, copper tape as an interlay between the carbon grease and the power source, in this case an alligator clip. Pre-stretch your VHB onto the acrylic ring by a preset amount. In this case, we're stretching by three times. Paint carbon grease on both sides, making sure to cover the entire electrode area. Attach copper tape to both sides to create a link between your voltage source and your actuator. Paint a line of carbon grease from your electrode to the copper tape. Measure your capacitance with an LCR meter and compare it with your calculated value. Clip electrodes to your copper tape leads. Before turning on the amplifier, set up your function generator. When you're ready, turn the power on. At 7 kb, maximum aerial expansion achieved is 50%. Loss of tension is an instability that occurs at large area expansion. At high voltage, or in this case frequency, the actuator will break down. Different shapes could give interesting actuations. Now, let's make some flapping actuators. These are the materials you need for the flapper. Thin plastic, tools for cutting, thicker plastic for the frame, super glue to glue the plastics together, VHP tape, and copper tape. Assembly is the same as with the previous actuator. Apply grease to both sides. When high voltage is applied, the actuator flaps. It creates sound at higher frequencies. Now let's have some fun with DEAs. Oh, it's burning each Sparking and burning at the ends. <laughs> to the common folk, this looks like a regular swan here. But if you looked underneath the hood, it's a super powered swan. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's a 10, that's 20, 30. 20 is the best, yeah. Alright, I think what we're gonna need now. Alright, let's kill it. Throw off. No, put on that bike, there's yeah. a motorcycle. Is there a motorcycle? Oh lord. I feel like it's gonna have mechanical failure before a dielectric breakdown. Yeah, it's yeah. It's just gonna rip it in half. I mean, look at it. Chad, why are you doing sit ups in the middle of the lab? Ugh. It's 7 o'clock, time to get my swan on. <laughs> okay, now listen up, retards. I've included some visual examples for you help you better understand because I know how hard it is for you to learn anything. Okay, can you see that? Can you begin to start understanding what's going on? Probably not. Now, when you can start controlling and managing your muscle vibration firing off those fast twitch muscles, you can do some nice amazing things, okay? when you can uh, shift your body weight with your vibration and um, use that uh, fast twitch to, <laughs> um, to balance your body weight like I'm doing here. Oh yeah. They catch me with this coat, what you think they gon' do to me? Damn. Couple judges, couple lawyers, even buying sure. blow. Mayor Cardine could be buying beans for all I know.
Listen up, retards. You want to start doing more Bruce Lee's than Bruce Lee, you better start paying attention. Start learning how your body works a little bit. Can you even begin to understand what's going on here? Probably not. Probably not. I'm dedicating these push-ups to the stop of inbreeding and inbred hillbillies. We must stop the clan. We must stop the clan. I will finish it. I will finish it.